Hey there, Holly Show listeners. Aaron Nabu's here, and Alex is here too. Hey, Alex. Going? Um, and on this episode, we will be talking about one of our favorite comic conventions, one of the more intimate ones, uh, San Diego Comic Fest. And, uh, and we're, we're, we're honored to be joined by uh, San Diego Comic Fest chairman, uh, Mr. Matt Dunford. Welcome to the show, Matt. Uh, you really brought me on again. <laughs> haven't, your, haven't your listeners heard enough from me? <laughs> and uh, this year's. Uh, uh, San Diego Comic Fest will take place March 5th through the 8th at the All Four Points uh, at the Sheraton off on Arrow Drive here in, in lovely San Diego, California. And uh, yeah, Matt, thanks for coming on the show to give us the 411. And uh, uh, yeah, I, you, I think you just had a volunteers meeting, right? Oh, uh, yeah, we just wrapped up at a volunteers meeting. So it's so awesome to see so many, so all the dozens of people coming out to show their support and really helping out uh, with things, just helping out with the show. Um, everyone, just like every little bit of, uh, every little bit of help really, it really makes Comic Fest uh, put together. I'm pretty tired these days because I've been running around every which place trying to do everything and showcase and, you know, spread the good word about the event. And I'm just really looking forward to it and I can't wait for things to come on by because I think this is going to be the best San Diego Comic Fest ever. Hmm. And why do you think that? Well, because I think it happens to be an incredible theme, and we have uh, what I could easily say is the best guest list ever. I mean, your guest of honor, Mr. Bill Sienkiewicz. Yes, Bill Sienkiewicz, you know, the art god himself, has agreed to be our guest of honor. You might know his works from, like, Electra Assassin, Daredevil Love and War, New Mutants Demon Bear, and, you know, and every other month he's on some kind of just mouth-watering cover on a comic that just makes you just like, I need that, I need that, I need that. The man is so prolific in his creativity, and his work is just so iconic. And even then, it's just he's a guy where you constantly discover new work from him. It's just like only recently I discovered his 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 graphic novel of, of the life story of Jimi Hendrix. And he even had a Santa Claus graphic novel that he did. And so, like, it's on, it's on the children's book side. So that's just remarkable to see. That's uh, Yeah, I'm looking forward to, to seeing him there. Um, you also have your science fiction guest of honor, Mr. J. Michael Straczynski. Yes, J. Michael Straczynski, who is a... I easily call him my favorite comic writer. The stuff he has done is just so life-changing to me and it just hooks me every time I read it and I just love every bit of it and you know it's just one of the issues I had with Comic Fest in the past is I'm not the biggest science fiction guy in the entire world and I never really recognized the names of our science fiction guest of honor but this year it's like you know what why don't we get a name that I recognize so I kind of reached out to JMS and I just called him out of the blue you know Oscar nominated uh Oscar nominated screenplay writer it's like okay Hi, Joe, would you like to be our science fiction guest of honor for the Ray Bradbury and Harry Housen Centennial? He says, you seriously want me to stand on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> so he was very much into the theme of the centennial of Ray Bradbury and the, and the centennial of Harry Housen. And yeah, so JMS is our science fiction guest of honor because I've enjoyed his works on The Amazing Spider-Man, on Thor, on Midnight Nation, Rising Star, Silver Surfer Requiem, Supreme Power. It's like this is... These are among my favorite comics of all time. I just cannot get enough of them. They were just, as I said, life-changing to me. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned uh, this year's theme. Um, you want to elaborate on that, why you picked uh, this year's theme uh, to be the, uh, the Centennial Ray Bradbury? Uh, well, Ray Bradbury. you know, as I said, we do want our theme each year to reflect on standing on some kind of monumental giant or historic event. So in the past, we've done, in 2017, we did the Centennial of Jack Kirby. In 2018, we did the Bicentennial of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. In 1960, like, uh, in 2019, we did 50 years of the Apollo 11 moon landing, which happened back in 69. And this year, we get to celebrate the Centennial of Bradbury and Harryhausen because they were, like I said, giants. Bradbury changed the way that people write stories. Harryhausen changed the way that people film movies. Mm -hmm. And so many countless creators, writers, artists, and filmmakers were influenced by their works. And so it becomes you know, a necessity for us to talk about their influence and, and just have creators share in that passion. It seems that about, just about every creator we invite to Fest this year is very into that idea. Mm -hmm, definitely. And also, also notice that Rob Salkovitz will be back. Yep. And, uh, Sienkiewicz, <clears throat> Straczynski, Salkovich. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, my friend Michael Dooley's, uh, Dooley will be there with his brother, oh, Kevin. Yep. 
Kevin Dooley, the uh, the legendary DC uh, editor back in the day, do, helping to shepherd the Green Lantern line in the 90s. So it's like, that's going to be uh, something fun for the, uh, for what, the 90s. What, what, ma- what makes him leg- legendary? That he was able to carry these, uh, these titles and keep them good in a period of time when... I don't want to say the comic industry was kind of sluggish, but, you know, I think DC books, it's like people say, oh, 90s books are so bad. I'm like, you obviously weren't reading the DC ones because the DC ones held it down. And, I mean, something they'll say like, oh, the Marvel books were just all Jim Lee clones and the image books. No, no, read the DC stuff. The DC stuff is straight up fire. And it's just the way that, that Kevin Dooley was leading Green Lantern through Emerald Knights and and Aquaman and just some of the Robin books. It's just his stuff was just phenomenal and that he, he was able to oversee all of these books and keep them going so strong in a time when comics could have just collapsed. But he actually was one of the guys who was one of those strong pillars that kept things through. He was the gatekeeper that kept stuff alive. Mm-hmm. And also noticed that um, uh, you've, you've uh, I guess, sort of fostered a relationship with... Uh, uh, GammaCon with with Hugo uh, Castro, um, yeah. and it seems like they have a growing contingency from Mexico this year. Oh yeah, so we do have a good co- collection of guests of international guests coming up from Mexico. So Hugo is always welcome at our show, and so you know GammaCon, which is you know catering to gamers, is a really wonderful convention to go through, and so we get to bring a little of that, and so we just to see how he. Uh, brings his focus from his two conventions and just shows his experience as a convention organizer and gets to talk about that with with the community and on the gaming side, I think, and as a convention organizer. And also of our international guests, we've got uh, Luis Gantas, who is the creator of the convention Conque, and he is a wonderful historian as well, just coming up on board. Juan L.A., uh, the cartoonist, is coming up from Mexico. And so, you know, we do believe in having an international presence just to showcase things because, you know, we a lot of our fans do come up from Tijuana to celebrate that stuff. And so we do want to showcase that Mexico has a thriving comic scene. And I think that's important because we are so close to, to Mexico, being that we are in San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, uh, are there any guests that uh, stand out to you? Um, Mike Royer is always... <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Mike Royer is always going to be the life of the party there, drinking a screwdriver and then uh, drawing uh, Winnie the Pooh characters on bar napkins for every uh, every girl in the room. He knows how to light up a crowd. <laughs> oh, you can't yeah. get a bad story out of him. He's always got those entertaining moments about, you know... <laughs> You know, just working with Jack Kirby, working for Russ Manning, like working at Disney. He's just always a wonderful, entertaining guy. Mm-hmm. And the other, other legendary people that will be there will be uh, um, Scott Shaw and. Uh, oh yeah, Scott Shaw, and I just got the final uh, T-shirt design from him. Oh, so yeah. it's all looking done forward up. to that. Yeah, it's done <laughs> up. It was just uh, drawn up uh, and colored by my uh, friend Dax Schaefer. So he's uh, come back to do the shirts for Comic Fest this year. They're going to the printers tomorrow, and they're going to be a very lovely design showcasing the. Uh, a good historical moment that uh, crosses over Bradbury and a and a moment with Harryhausen, and I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be really uh, really well received by the fans. Mm-hmm. And uh, Mr. Sergio Aragones, Sergio Aragones, one of those last minute stragglers who uh, just uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like I had initially asked if he would like to be a repeat offender, and he's like, oh, I usually like to skip shows in between. It's like I have no new books to show this year, and you know. I uh, could probably look for a job in the meantime after being laid off from Mad Magazine. <laughs> oh, right, right, that's right. <laughs> but just the other day, he just uh, called me up. He's like, I changed my mind. Can I come back to Comic Fest? I had such a good time last year. It's like... His panel was awesome last yeah. year. And we're happy to bring back Sergio. Awesome. Look also, to bring back, uh, who wasn't able to make it last year, was Willie Ito. Willie Ito, yeah. sadly, who could not make it last year due to uh, some some health issues, but the three tuners are back this year round. So it's like we've got Willie Ito, we've got we've got we've got. Uh, it's like they're all coming back, and so like Willie Ito is one of those guys who every time he comes to the show, which is you know kind of sporadic and in between, he always has a good story to tell. He has told us some, you know, wonderful stories about working with Walt Disney, animating the spaghetti scene uh, in Lady and the Tramp, and you know, ask him. You know, one of my one of my favorite questions is, how did you come up with Hong Kong Fui? Because he did create Hong Kong Fui. <laughs> and of course, of the uh, of the three of the three tuners, we also have Jerry Eisenberg, and we also have Tony Benedict, and so these big hitters of animation. Of course, Jerry Jerry Eisenberg, you might know him from The Jetsons, Huckleberry Hound, Johnny Quest, Wacky Wacky Races, Super Friends, Plastic Man, and of course, Thunder the Barbarian, uh, with 
with Jerry this year, I've actually asked him if he wants to be on a Super Friends panel, and he has agreed. And so mm. there's going to be a lot of creators that are showcasing their times because there, there were a lot of great writers that were cutting their teeth on Super Friends this, when it was first coming out, like Buzz Dixon right. and John Semper were as well. But also uh, writer Jim Kruger, who wrote the story Justice with Alex Ross. That's not a Justice League story. That's a Super Friends story. And he says, yeah, it's completely a Super Friends story. And so he has even been, uh, he is actually excited to sit on this panel as well. <laughs> just, you know, just hearing the excitement in your voice has gotten us excited. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but there's still so many wonderful guests that I'm looking forward to seeing, including uh, Liam Sharp, who you might know his work currently on Green Lantern with Grant Morrison. And he also did Wonder Woman with Greg Rucka, and he did Brave and the Bold. He did the Gears of War comic, and he's just such a wonderful guy to hang out with. He's had a busy schedule in these past couple of years, so it's very, very exciting to see him back on the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see Marv Wolfman will be making an appearance. Marv Wolfman will be making an appearance, and so uh, you might know him from New Teen Titans, Crisis on Infinite Earths, and Tomb of Dracula. He's just one of the most prolific writers in comics over the past 50 years. And so we are going to be doing some very cool panels with him. We're going to be doing 40 years of New Teen Titans. Oh, nice. Hard to believe it's been around that long, but yes, it has. <laughs> we are going to be doing 80 years of Robin with him. And uh, we're going to be doing another program called Midlife Crisis, Crisis at 35. <laughs> so, of course, he is going to go guide us through the story of Crisis starting in 1985, coming back to the story in Infinite Crisis 15 years later, and then this year, he just wrapped up writing the crossover for the TV episodes of Crisis on Infinite Earths that just happened uh, on the CW. And I'm glad they gave him an opportunity to actually appear. Yeah, that was on so the cool. Episode, yeah. <laughs> I think Keith and I'll be stoked for that for the, uh, yeah. for the for that panel because he's a huge uh, oh, yeah. Titans fan. And uh, also I'm really looking forward to uh, Wendy and Richard Peeney of ElfQuest coming to the show. They are just such phenomenal creators, and they're so nice, and I'm just ecstatic to have them around. Like, how, how far like in advance do you actually start uh, booking people for, for the next show? <sighs> you know, it's just, as soon as the show was done last year, I was thinking, like, what are we going to do this year? So the first <clears> thing <throat> I think out is, like, okay, what's our, what's our theme? Uh, Centennial of Bradbury and Harryhausen. Cool. Need to find some reflector, some people that can reflect there. Um, there's always going to be creators who are, are frequent flyers, people like John Semper, Buzz Dixon, Barbara Kiesel. They're always welcome at the show because they're always great to the fans. They're always entertaining. But as a convention organizer, you don't want to have the same kind of guest list over and over again. You do want to shake things up. And so, if, I mean, there's some conventions that kind of like, oh, this person, I've already seen them. So I do like to shake up the guest list every single time. And so I thought to myself last year, okay, Sergio Aragonis was our guest of honor. How, could, how can I do better than that? He is a tough act to follow. So I thought to myself, okay, I need to say, who are the who are the creators on earth that I think are more prolific that I would want as a guest of honor than Sergio? I'm thinking to myself, okay, I can name them on one hand. Alex Ross, sorry, I don't do conventions. Jim Stranko, sadly couldn't get through to him. Hmm, maybe I could try for Grant Morrison. Ah, too enigmatic and too mysterious and thinking like oh i have my dream wish list guy of uh, john Romita senior but he says yeah he's kind of retired from conventions unless you land a plane on his street <laughs> and thinking oh my man all those creators but all those all those creators have one thing in common who would they point to as the world's greatest living artist at the time hmm i think they would all point to bill Sienkiewicz. Lo and behold, he said yes. <laughs> what was your pitch? What was your pitch to him? It's uh, initially I'd been trying to get him to come to Comic Fest in the past couple of years, but he'd always been too busy. It's just like he says, you know, I wish I was three. There were three of me, and it's like I've heard so many wonderful things about the show, but it just couldn't. He couldn't just never swing it with the schedule. So at Comic Con this year, I went up to him to ask him at his booth, and I said, Bill, I would like to offer you guest of honor at San Diego Comic Fest, and fortunately. My homie Barbara Kiesel was there. And she's like, Bill, Bill, you have to do the show. It's so wonderful. It's so nice. It's so great. It's so well done. I really enjoyed myself. It's like you would be doing a disservice to your show to not do the show. And he says, you know what? I'll do it. I'm looking forward to spending a weekend with all my friends. Nice. Yeah. Because he'd heard so many great things about it from his friends. Mm -hmm. Most of the times it's the, uh, the long game that you have to play. Yeah, the know? word of mouth really takes you a long way. Mm -hmm. um, 
what else? Uh, I mean, at, at present time, programming isn't up on the website yet, uh, but is there anything that you can tell us? Uh, give us a little, sort of tease it a little bit? You know, I can tease a little bit because uh, some stuff will be uh, going up fairly soon. So um, with, with J. Michael Straczynski, I always enjoy his panel so much at Comic-Con, but he does one panel. And the people asking questions are like, oh, I got a Babylon 5 question. Oh, I got a He-Man question. Oh, I got a Spider-Man question. You know what? There is never enough time to get the questions you want out of that guy because every, because he has such a broad career. So I said, you know what? We're going to split it up into a couple panels. We're going to do Spotlight on Science Fiction Guest of Honor, J. Michael Straczynski, talking about his science fiction work. So you can go to him there, talk about Babylon 5, talk about his Twilight Zone stuff, talk about Sense8. Talk about that Forbidden Planet movie that he's got in the works with the James Cameron. Talk about the science fiction stuff there. But we're also going to be doing the comics of J. Michael Straczynski, moderated by me. So that way, if you have those pressing questions about Rising Stars, Midnight Nation, Silver Surfer Requiem, and of course, um, my little personal favorite, The Amazing Spider-Man, you can get those questions answered from him there. To, and you can see what's coming up next for him with his new projects from uh, AWA, Artists, Writers, and Artisans. I think that's what it's called now. But he's got that uh, new project called Resistance coming up with Mike Deodato. And so he's going to be overseeing the imprint of comics coming out from that line. So that's pretty cool. And then the third one that we're doing with him, the animation of J. Michael Straczynski. So uh, that's going to be moderated by my good friend TJ Shevlin. So... TJ is, of course, you all know he's a huge He-Man fan and a huge real Ghostbusters fan. Those cartoons that Straczynski was doing in the early 1980s. And so we get to look over that career in animation that he was doing there. So that's how you break it up with a guest who has had such a prolific, diverse career. You just separate them into cool panels there. So that's my plan for, for JMS there. Other uh, cool ones we get to do... Um, just trying to think. Okay, I've done the Marv Wolfen one. We uh, are going to be doing some great historical ones called The Secret Origins of DC Comics. That's going to be with um, Nikki, uh, Nikki Wheelerson, who is the uh, great-granddaughter of Major Malcolm, uh, Major Malcolm Wheelerson, who was the creator of DC Comics in 1935. And so we get to explore that history with him. And other certain fanboy panels that I get to shoehorn in myself are going to do a panel called I Used to Write Spider-Man. So that's going to be uh, for the Spidey fans out there. So Straczynski will be on that panel. John Semper and also Jim Kruger. And so, oh, and Marv Wolfman as well, because he was also a Spidey writer. You know, Mar Wolfman actually, you know, created Black Cat. He did The Return of the Burglar and uh, Amazing Spider-Man 200. So I want to talk to these different writers about their perspectives of writing my personal favorite character. And then other stuff we can do, like the fine art of comics. I actually want to talk to some creators about... What is it like seeing your work as fine art that you've made it there? So that's going to be with Kim Munson and Bill Sienkiewicz and Rob Salkovich and Liam Sharp. So you get to see these artists who've made the leap from comic art to fine art. And so that's a really interesting thing there. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. yeah. And then other panels that we're really looking forward to. Um, the guest that I am most ecstatic about at this event is a guy who was kind of hanging out at Comic Fest last year. Uh, I would bump into him and say hi for a bit, but I was kind of putting out every single fire, so I didn't really get to meet him until the final day of the show. And he introduced himself to me. He's like, hey, my name is Mark Ditko. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, e any relation? You Steve Ditko was my <laughs> uncle. And I invited him as a guest this year because he is actually the historical archivist of the Ditko collection. We are going to be doing one panel on Ditko with Mark. So for me, this is the most important panel of the show. I had a good time meeting him last year, too. He is a very nice guy mm -hmm. and shows a great new light to the life of Steve Ditko, who was a guy that you know, I was pretty much obsessed with learning any fact about Steve Ditko that I could. It's just Ditko was a very private man, and so he never really revealed details about himself and his life. And so Mark shows another side of Ditko that we haven't seen before. So we're going to be doing a panel with him called Into the Ditkoverse. So Mark will be on it. Jackie Estrada will be on it. J. Michael Straczynski will be on it. And John Semper will be on it. And I believe the last one is Marv Wolfman. So people who did, who were inspired by the Ditko works. And then Mark will be telling some stories about Ditko and his work. And so if you ever want to look into the life of Steve Ditko, this is going to be uh, one of those very few and far between opportunities. Mm -hmm. 
And I think Mark was also working on some sort of documentary, right? I believe so. I'm not exactly certain. I know, I think he has uh, a new book coming out with from IDW. I know he talks about things sparingly because he doesn't want to overstep limits with the family. And he sure. does want to be respectful to the legacy of his, of his uncle as well. Mm-hmm. Cool. Anything else that you want to care to share? Um, we're also going to be uh, celebrating another cool comic history uh, lesson aside from this. Well, the, the comic history uh, moment that we're going to be celebrating there is the legacy of Ratfink. So we have invited Trixie Roth, who is the widow of the late great Big Daddy Roth. And so she's going to be coming out uh, on behalf of the uh, of the Ratfink Museum. And uh, you'll be some uh, seeing some hot rods out there, too, with some crazy artwork on it. So I'm uh, happy <laughs> that we get to celebrate Ratfink at this year's Comic Fest. Nice. And um, you're returning back to the uh, Four Points Sheraton. Yes, we'll be back at the Four Points Sheraton. We've got a little more room to move, so we'll have more atriums to uh, make use of. So we're not just having an artist alley, but also a small press section, which is operated by Travis Rivas. And that's and also a gaming atrium, which is going to be very cool, too. So we will be having all, a great set of digital artistry workshops, uh, f- have at least five panel rooms operating at the same time in a very large, spacious exhibit hall where you can go see some of the special guests and hang out with some comic dealers. And... Uh, the lobby will be decked out with some uh, very nice, uh, I can't spoil it just yet, but it might be Harryhausen themed. <laughs> nice. Um, dude, I'm so stoked for this year, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, Alex, uh, do you have any questions? Uh, no. Just can't wait to see the rest of the programming. Oh, yeah. Just from what you gave us right now, it's like, wow. <laughs> Even I, I'm fanboying out myself looking over it because I'm saying like, uh, I'm, I'm moderating a panel and this other panel is going on at the same time and I have to miss it. Yeah. And so that's just like one of my big things there. It's, it's like the, the trouble of trying to be everywhere in the world at once. Mm-hmm. Cool. Alex, I guess it's a good time for the Thunder Round. Thunder Round. Go and take All it away. Right. <laughs> All right. First question. What color best describes you? Black. Black. Why? It's dark. Dark. <laughs> Works with anything. All right. Cool. If you could uh, recommend a book or movie to your 15-year-old self, what would it be and why did you choose that book or movie? Life of Pi and Life of Pi. Because it would be about a year before I finally read it, and I would say to my 15-year-old self, this is a book that you will actually enjoy, and it will be a story that really inspires you. And then when the movie comes out, you'll be saying to yourself, how did they take my favorite book and make it into an even better movie cool yeah good all right if you could place yourself in the universe of one of your favorite fandoms what would it be and why did you choose it um that is a difficult situation i would think and i'm kind of torn because i am thinking of some (laughs) options i would put myself in the King of the Hill universe (laughs) simply because it might seem dull and boring, but every day you are thrust into the most uncomfortable situation that you ever imagined and it's always going to come up with a good story. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. I'll tell you what. (laughs) (laughs) Alright, if you could teleport to anywhere in the world right now, where would you go and why'd you pick the place? Hmm. I would teleport to that kind of in between dimension that nightcrawler goes to when he teleports between dimensions and he's like got like <laughs> demons there they kind of wrote it off in x-men evolutions so how it's like the brood was there because they did they weren't ready for space travel and so like the brood were living in interdimensional things and so nightcrawler would kind of go there for like a split second before popping out the other side it made for an interesting moment when they like slowed down teleportation he got trapped there so that was like one of the cooler x-men evolution episodes so brood dimension world in between because I think it's cool. <laughs> That's the place to teleport. Nice. What's one thing your fans would be surprised to know about you? One thing my fans would be surprised to know about me. Well, the first thing, I'm surprised I have fans. <laughs> All two of you out there, I think. I don't know. But um, I think the surprising thing is I don't make as much time to read as much as uh, people think. It's just I have very little time to sit down. I do a lot of activism work. I'm always on the go. I'm always doing something, and so I'm always somewhere. So I just wish I had the time to sit down and read because I just wish I wasn't as busy as I was. But I work hard for the community to make sure that people are having a good time. That's what I, that's what I hustle for. Cool. Nice. All right. What are your three favorite things? 
one of my three favorite things. Um, I really like Spider Man. Um, I like Beavis and Butthead Do America. Guess what? That's the movie that no matter how many times it's on TV, I will sit down and watch it because it's just, you know, so wildly entertaining. And I do like that uh, first cup of coffee in the morning that I can uh, sit down and uh, just revitalize myself and remind myself why, you know, time to get up, time to get going, time to do your geeky stuff because... So yeah, I'm a coffee addict, so I can't feel I can't feel alive without it. Nice. <laughs> and then before you start going for, with the last question, Alex, the reason I put this question in there is because I saw one of your posts on Facebook, mm-hmm. and um, I thought it was I, I wanted to include that in there because I wanted you to sort of maybe share why you posted that about the uh, uh, the autistic. It wasn't the kid was a kid on the spectrum, and then you sort of um, you said. I guess the father or parent was having trouble communicating with the kid. Mm-hmm. And then you said, and then you, you asked the kid, what are your three favorite things? Yeah, what are your three favorite things? Yeah. Oh, okay, so that's why, so yeah. I see how it follows up there. Yeah. Okay, I didn't realize it at first. So I say to these things because, you know, autistic children are always going to have some incredibly narrow yet intense focus. You look at me when I was a kid, I was obsessed with three things. I was obsessed with Spider-Man, Lego Pirates, and... Star Wars, and so it's like, it was always three things at one point, and so it's just, I'm trying, and like one thing would kind of like mosey out, so like when I got into Pokemon, that's when Legos were etched out, and actually, I was so obsessed with Pokemon, I couldn't even buy Star Wars figures or anything anymore, it's like, that's like, just became all Pokemon focus, so you can see these periods of my life where I've just become obsessed with this sort of thing, but I mean, the Spider-Man stuff does stay eternal in one shape or form, Um, but the whole thing is, parents don't really delve into their thing, they try to talk about stuff with their children that they don't want to talk about. And so I say, hey, what are you into? And so the kids will want to like talk about Fortnite or something with me. And I mean, I don't really play Fortnite, but I'm willing to listen and I'm willing to learn. And so they feel like they have something because with these kids, it often times feels like he knows what I'm saying. Here is someone who speaks my language. And that's the coolest thing because I felt as a child, someone else who's into the X-Men cartoon and I can just, you know, chat with them about it. And so that just feels like someone where I can really speak my language and just tell them every single fun fact I've learned about this sort of thing because it's just like you learn so much, you learn so much, you learn so much, you just want to tell someone. You want someone who understands you. Mm-hmm. And so that's uh, that's why it's important there. So you're pretty into, you're more per- perspe- perceptive when these sort of situations happen because of your experience. From my own experience, yeah. of course. I worked with a young man, well, I worked with a young man named Adrian Perez who, you know, I could tell as soon as I met this kid, he was kind of on the spectrum to some degree. And some of the instructors at Little Fish were like, I can't deal with him. He just won't shut up about stuff. I'm like, well, just listen to him. It's like, okay, like, how did this happen in the DC universe? Well, it happened in this book here. And I show him this. It's like, well, how did that happen? Well, that led into this, led into this. It's like, led into this. It's like well, how did that? And some instructors had trouble keeping up with him. He's a kid with a million questions, and so I had to be the guy with the million answers. And like, how did you do that? It's like, I just read the stuff. You just have to show him where it's from. And I know he wants to be pretty narrow in his focus and only talk about, like, New 52 DC. But it's like, you know, you can check out this old stuff. It's cool, too. But that's old stuff. It's not the, uh, Give it some time. This New 52 will be old stuff, too. Yeah, New 52 is nine years old now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> cool. Yeah, Alex? All right. Last uh, Thunder Round question. If uh, Steve Ditko was still alive and you invited him to Comic Fest... San Diego Comic Fest to do a panel. What panel? What would the panel be about? Um, of course, we could go into the Ditko verse, but ideally, and I'm saying it's like because I know Ditko never accepted an invitation to any comic convention ever. I would ideally like to bring him onto. I used to write Spider Man. That would be my personal fanboy thing. So the thing is, Ditko never accepted a convention appearance ever. But you know who's the one guy in history who actually got Ditko to accept a convention appearance? Who? Matt Dunford. Ah. Mark Ditko, but default, <laughs> default, default. <laughs> cool. Um, you mentioned your work in the community uh, a little bit earlier. Um, I knew you do a lot of work. You do a lot of work for uh, a Little Fish Comic Book Studio. Yeah, I served uh, for five years on the board at, uh, as president of Little Fish Comic Book Studio, and it's kind of weird now. So I think all the kids that I used to work with starting off there and they're all going to college now, and it's like, no, stop being so old. It's not cool anymore, and you're all gone now. And so you know, I will make some. I don't get out there as much as 
I used to because I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff, uh, you know, with Critivo, with the other community. So it's, it's hard for me to make it out there on that Saturday morning. But I try to go out there, give them my big stack of single issues and get this, get the kids reading. So it doesn't really do anything for me to have all these single issues just lying around the house and I don't want to sell them, but I'm just giving them away to kids so they can, you know, start reading so they can get the creativity. And I tell the kids, you have free time right now. Read everything you can. Play all the video games that you can. Watch all the TV and all the anime and all the cartoons and stuff because this is the stuff that is going to shape your imagination. And when you're older, you won't have tire, You won't have time for this because you're always going to be tired. I know. It's like you have energy now. Enjoy it now. This is going to be the stuff that really shapes you. You see how I talk about Spider-Man and all the stuff all the time. This is the stuff that inspired me. I want you to constantly be inspired by a whole lot of stuff. You have this luxury where you can take in so much stuff. I was very narrow in my focus. I was always just like Marvel only, Nintendo only, Star Wars only. So I denied myself like Sega games and PlayStation games. I denied myself DC Universe. It took me a lot of time to open up to that sort of stuff because I felt like, you know, it's like if it's not Marvel, it's the enemy. It's a very narrow focus. But once you start opening up your horizons, you start seeing so much new out there. That's, that's some good advice. Um, what other projects are you involved with? Um... One of the video games I'm working on right now called Seri the Beginning is really cool. It's uh, about um, an alien named Seri from the planet uh, Iris that crash lands on a sort of primordial world. And it's a puzzle game where you have to solve things in a, in a long-form adventure alongside some great, uh, great characters. One is called uh, Spiny, who is this uh, little sort of beetle creature who is uh, on the hunt for, uh, for its babies, little miniature versions of itself. And then... My favorite character that helps out is Stompy. Stompy's not very smart, but he uh, he does stomp stuff, and he smashes rocks, and he is a very good friend. He's sort of just like a gorilla meets a whale with the brain of a with a bulldog, and he's awesome. I think we all love Stompy, and I think people are really going to love uh, Seri the Beginning when it comes out uh, from Crytivo later this year. Add us on your Steam wish list. It'll be on uh, Nintendo Switch. It'll be on... Uh, It'll be on Xbox One, and it'll be available on PC and Mac as well. So I think it's a good adventure for the whole family. You started working at Criterio uh, recently, right? Yeah, about six, six months ago. Mm -hmm. And um, what's it like working in the video game world? The video game world has been an interesting bag of things because it's just um, I don't play a whole lot of video games anymore, and so my whole thing is just more of an ambassador role for these games. So it's showcasing things and getting things to light. And so I work with a lot of developers working on these games behind the scenes, and so it's been very nice working with these communities um, and helping these games along the way. Our main in-house game, The Universum, is one some real great critical acclaim despite being a game that's only recently moved into its beta performance, and. People are addicted to it. It's I like I like the universe and because from what I see in it, it's what the SimCity franchise should have evolved into. I was such a huge SimCity fan back in the day. And so with the universe and a game where you are essentially God, starting off with uh, two individuals, an Adam and Eve, helping build up a society, helping some them survive and building up more population and you know, moving from the Stone Age into the Space Age is a really cool experience to see. And it's, uh, it's a fun challenge, and I really like it. Mm, cool. Well, let's shift the, back, uh, the conversation back to uh, San Diego Comic Fest. Um, is there anything else that you'd like our audience to know about that we've missed? Um, I would be happy to see you there. It's March 5th through the 8th. Or check us out on our website, www.sdcomicfest.org. And take this opportunity to experience the convention on the intimate scale. Very rarely... Are you going to have a chance to meet such prolific t creators? Bill Sienkiewicz, J. Michael Straczynski, Sergio Aragonis, Disney legend Floyd Norman, Mark Ditko, Wendy Peeney, Richard Peeney, Marv Wolfman, Liam Sharp. The list goes on and on. We are bringing in such amazing creators of comics, science fiction, cartoons, and you have the opportunity to just hang out with them. Bigger conventions, I love bigger conventions, but there's always a little bit of a hustle and bustle feel about it, that you're always pressured to go somewhere else. At Comic Fest, there is no pressure. You just hang out and you take your time with them. The coolest thing about Comic Fest is you enter on a Thursday looking up to these people as gods, but by the end of it, you just call them friend. Yeah, can't see it. Can't see any better than that. I know. <laughs> Cool. Well, hey, Matt, thanks again for coming on the show. It's always an honor to have you on. Oh, it's an always a pleasure to be back, guys. Thank you so much.
Same time next year? Same time next year. <laughs> Alex, close out the show. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Hall of Show podcast, where we love showcasing intimate comic conventions like San Diego Comic Fest. Thanks again to Matt, Chairman Matt Dunford for stopping by the Hall of Show to give us an update. Uh, if you believe in our mission to be the voice of independent creators, we would love a rating, hopefully five stars, and a comment on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, please share our episode using the hashtag Highlight Show. Peace, cheers, and if you'd like to recommend a guest for our show, please reach out to us on any of our social media accounts or our website, hollyh.com. Peace, cheers, and see you at San Diego Comic Fest. Bye. See you at Comic Fest. What a conversation with uh, Chairman Matt Dunford. Uh, I guess they don't call him the world's youngest comic book historian for nothing, right? Um, he's just a wealth of information, and I'm just in awe each time he uh, comes by the show. Um, yeah, uh, minor update and a few other announcements. Um, the programming uh, for San Diego Comic Fest is now up, so just go to uh, SD Comic Fest. Dot org and all the panels are now up. I'm looking forward to uh, uh, seeing as much of those uh, as I can uh, uh, this coming weekend, March 5th through the 8th uh, at the Four Points by Sheraton here in sunny uh, San Diego. Hopefully it'll be sunny. Um, and I was recently at an event that I go to or have been going to for the past uh, two years. This will be the third year of the uh, the Black Comics Day. Uh, it used to be just one day. Now it's two. Uh, it's uh, it's growing and it's such an important event. Um, and I was honored uh, that Keith and Jones, the organizer, asked uh, if I could uh, uh, moderate a panel um, this year. It's the same panel that I moderated last year, um, just with uh, some new creatives um, uh, as panelists. And it's, it's the Empowered, how indie comic book creators build universes and communities. And my panelists this time around uh, were Robert Love. Uh, he's a writer artist and he's been published by Dark Horse Comics. Uh, Greg Anderson LSA, he's the writer and creator of the uh, uh, the awesome comic book is not a the Were spider um, dr. Lawana Richmond um, she's uh, she owns uh, Furiali visions and she's active in um, organizing the afrofuturism lounge that takes place uh, during San Diego comic-con um, sort of offside another building and uh, Jason Reeves he's the writer artist and self publisher uh, he owns uh, 133 Art, and he owns 133 Printing, so he can pretty much print his own comic books. Uh, we talked about that in the, a little bit in the, in the panel. Uh, we also talk about um, why these uh, creators chose to be indie creators, uh, where their ideas come from, um, how to market your book in the internet age, and uh, black representation in today's comic book and pop culture world. We talk about all that and more. Uh, it was a pretty pretty awesome conversation and the video for this panel is up on the Hall H Show uh, YouTube channel just uh, so just look that up uh, my last announcement is about the uh, the International Mobile Film Festival uh, it's coming up at the end of April uh, April 24th 25th and 26th uh, it's now three days instead of two so uh, that uh, uh, that festival is, now, is, is growing as well, and founder uh, Susie Botel has a lot in store uh, this year. So uh, uh, you, if you're interested in, in, in making movies on your smartphone, I encourage you to come to this festival. Uh, I'll be there. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to see some of you there. Um, if you want more information, just go to internationalmobilefilmfestival.com. Tickets are now on sale. This is a, this is the ninth annual International Mobile Film Festival. Uh, the theme is uh, hindsight, uh, 2020. So uh, it's a it's a look. So we'll be looking back, but also looking forward uh, to the possibilities of uh, making movies on smartphones. Uh, so that's 
it for my uh, updates for this episode. Um, Peace, cheers, and I hope you take care and talk to you later. Bye.